Hi everyone. Welcome to this week's episode and to our first class on human anatomy. In today's introductory class, we will talk about the anatomical positions, various terminologies, planes and the movements. The knowledge of this is a must before you all go ahead to learn the human anatomy. Before we start, let us try to describe a cut injury over this area of your elbow. While describing it in standing position facing forwards, we can refer to it as an injury in front of the arm. But what if we lie down? Now the injury comes in the upper part of the elbow. What if we lie down on our stomach? The site of injury moves to the lower part. But wait, is it still in the front of the elbow? Now, if there is one more injury, how will you describe the first one and the second one? Hey, we are all confused here. Because there is no predefined position before we have started describing these injuries. And further, we don't know the anatomical terms and planes to describe it. Welcome to Anatomy Weekly. Therefore, before using the common terminologies of anatomy, which is universal, a predefined standard position of the body is assumed, which is called the anatomical position. Remember, all the terminologies which we will learn today for describing the topography are used assuming the body to be in this position. The anatomical position is described as a position where a person is standing erect, with a straight neck, head facing forwards, with eyes looking to the infinity, upper limbs straight and close to the body and palm facing forwards, lower limbs together with the toes posing forwards. Now let us learn these anatomical terminologies. Anterior denotes the front side of the body. Posterior denotes the back. Superior refers to the upper end. Inferior refers to the lower end. Synonymously, the term cranial or cephalic is used for superior, that is, towards the cranium or head. Similarly, for inferior, the term caudal is used, which means towards the tail or lower end. Ventral, which means towards the belly, is used sometimes for anterior, and dorsal, which means towards the back, is used for posterior. Terms used in respect to any surface. Superficial means nearer to the surface and deep means a structure deeper to the surface. For understanding further terminologies, let us imagine a division of the body into two equal halves. This line dividing the body into two equal halves is known as the median line or a median axis. Let us just draw a few more lines by the side of the median line. The line which is close to the median line will now be called as the medial. And the line which is away from the median line will be termed as the lateral. Similarly, if we take two points in respect to the same median line, the point close to the median line is the medial point and away from the median line is the lateral point. In simple words, a median point is near to the midline of the body and a lateral point is away from the midline of the body. Now let us draw another line in between the earlier medial and lateral lines. What are we supposed to call this line? Well, this line in between is called the intermediate line or plane. There are some more terms used synonymously. Like in the upper limb, the term radial can be used for lateral as the lateral bone over here is the radius. Similarly, with the ulnar bone on the medial side of the forearm, the term ulnar can be used for medial. The term palmar can be used while describing the anterior aspect of the palm. For discussing the planes or axis, let us again see the anatomical position. A sagittal plane is a longitudinal plane which divides the body into two halves a right and a left half. Moreover, a sagittal section can be a mid-sagittal or a parasagittal section. A coronal plane is a longitudinal plane which divides the body into two halves, an anterior and a posterior half. A horizontal plane or an axial plane or a cross section 
is a plane which divides the body into a superior and an inferior half. These anatomical sections are used in everyday clinical practice while reporting a CT scan or an MRI. The term proximal refers to a point which is towards the center of the body. The term distal is a point which is away from the center of the body. These terms are usually commonly used in reference to the limbs. Moving ahead, let us just understand the terminologies to describe the body movements. Flexion is a movement where two surfaces approach each other and comes nearer. Just the opposite is the extension, where the two surfaces move away from each other. Flexion and extension of the shoulder joint can be seen something like this. Abduction is a movement where the limbs move away from the midline of the body and just the opposite of it is adduction where the limbs moves towards the body. If the limb is moved beyond 90 degrees like this, it is called overhead abduction. For the shoulder joint, the medial and lateral rotation can be done like this. The full range of movement possible in the shoulder joint like this is called circumduction. A forearm further permits some special rotatory movements, the axis for which passes parallel to the bones inside it. Here the movement where the palm faces downwards is called pronation, the movement opposite to it is called supination. All the movements can be described in different individual joints of our body. As we move ahead with the anatomy classes, we will be discussing the movements of individual joints in the respective topics. Now let us try to use the terminologies which we learned today to describe the injury of the arm again which we were confused about earlier. Remember while describing anything in an anatomy, we always assume the body to be in anatomical position. Now we can describe easily the first injury that is, it is in the anterior aspect of the arm. To be more specific, we can say it is this much proximal to the elbow joint or this much distance distal to the shoulder joint. For the second injury, now we can say it is proximal to the first one or in reference to any point and in this way, we can go ahead on using anatomical descriptions. Be it for trauma or a tumor, you will always be using these anatomical terms for accurate descriptions throughout your professional career like in describing x-rays, CT scans, clinical cases and many more.